Hi everyone, this video shows the state of modern dating. I can't really make it any more clear, I don't really even need to talk, but um, anyway, it basically shows 80% of unmarried women under 35 are currently monkey branching. They've come from Ray Ray, they're going to Tyrone, they'll upgrade to Chad who has more money, they'll upgrade again to Chang who has even more money never letting go of the previous branch, obviously. And they are on their pursuit to find the mythical Giga Chad that they'll never actually get because he doesn't really exist. The reason 80% of unmarried women under 35 do this is because they can. Some of them choose not to, even though they can, which is very rare. And another percentage of them may be morbidly obese and simply would um, break the branch if they held on to it, so they're not physically capable of um, of doing this. On their pursuit to Giga Chad, uh, when they're between Tyrone, Chad or Chang, they'll often fall um, and land on one of the 99% of usually invisible men. Now when they do this, they'll just use that man in the short term to boost their confidence back up so that they can um, get back on the branch and uh, keep uh, pursuing Giga Chad. Um, so if, if you're not in this Tyrone Chad Chang category, you're basically um, just going to get the leftovers and they're just going to use you for a short time um, until they get their confidence back. It's not actually because like you're on their level, even though a lot of the time, uh, mo most of the time, you're probably more physically fit, have more money, have a higher social status. O overall, traditionally, you would have had a higher tr uh, sexual marketplace value. Uh, we're in a state now where um, we have gone past um, traditional hypergamy, which is basically just women trying to level up. Um, as much as they can and, and then settle for something that's moderately fair. Uh, we have well surpassed that. So with this graphic I might explain the different, different levels of hypergamy. So basically hypergamy is when it, women wanting to breed or marry or have a relationship or in today's world a situationship with men who exceed their own biological economic and social status. There is a biological requirement for this imperative and if it is motivated by love and the desire to be protected by a man, it can actually lead to a healthy family structure based on the feminine aspect of nurturing and they may require or, or want the man to have economic success to ensure themselves a good quality of life and care for the kids. And that's basically where the uh, pure motivations end. Um, and then from there we go into, um, you know, maybe they want a bit too much money in, the, in order to be lazy and for it to be convenient for them, in which case it is mo motivated by sloth. Going further into the dark motivations for hypergamy, we go into the realm of narcissistic hypergamy. This type of hypergamy is not based on love and protection. It is based on hatred of the men and also a self-hatred. The uh, need or requirement for a man to provide is overcome with greed. Um, and, and the profit motive becomes the main driving force, not the actual relationship. So this is obviously where uh, women will want to marry a man with significantly more money than they have, with, and the intention is to divorce them. They never actually intended to stay with the man. And basically, if they combine this with the monkey branching, they can basically drain Chad, and then after that, drain drain Chang and um, they always keep going until um, they they fall off the branch uh, but their their main their goal is to, to find Giga Chad and drain him it is also made of motivated by jealousy 
just the fact that they want other women to be jealous of them by posting on social media, lifestyle flexing. It can also be motivated by wrath, uh, just getting sadistic satisfaction from f finding a man out of their league, uh, a Chad or Tyrone, um, tricking him and then trying to um, destroy him financially and emotionally. Like I've mentioned in a pre previous video of mine, um, a lot of these narcissistic women, they want the man to basically self-delete. That would be their ultimate goal. It can also be motivated by envy. They may see a woman with a Chad or a Tyrone that they want. Um, may maybe they're not even compatible with that Tyrone or Chad, but just the fact that um, another woman has secured that Chad uh, they would then want to steal that mate from him. So mate stealing is also very much um, a, a part of this. It doesn't even matter if it's the woman's best friend, they'll still do it. Uh, and this is motivated by envy. So basically, in this framework, even a lot of the chads uh, in this day and age, uh, which I would classify as hyperhoflation, are becoming chad carks. These chads are actually sharing the women because they don't even know how to set boundaries themselves. And a lot of the guys, whether you're a chad or the 99% of men, are just opting out because they don't want to be carks. So we can also continue this. What I was mentioning before was the levels of hypergamy based around the individual woman's motivation. But we also have stages of hypergamy on a societal level. Like I mentioned before, we have traditional hypergamy, which is where women want a man with around the same sexual marketplace value as her, usually a little bit higher, to settle down with. We then have, after that, feminist hypergamy, where women don't rely on an individual man, but rely on men in general. And then, basically, they want to um, flex their hypergamy biologically. So basically body positivity, they want to find a fit man even though they are not fit themselves. Um, and, and basically their goal is to live like the girls from Sex and the City in their teens and 20s and then circle around um, and maybe divorce him, maybe not. Um, when we enter the hypergamy stage of hoflation, which is where we have been up until recently, we get things like polyamory, uh, filters adding to this distortion, um, and some of the lower tier men becoming cuckolds. After that we get hyperhoflation, which is basically polygamy, where basically it is just a, a few chads having, you know, five, ten different girls on the go at each time. Um, and then this gives way to I'm a ten culture because the chads are lowering their standards so much that a lot of the average women start to actually believe that they are tens, which leads to the next stage, uh, complete delusion, which is where we'll be heading soon. So basically in the delusion stage, we'll have AI sex bots, uh, we'll have homeless middle-aged women still waiting for Chad to come and rescue them with a wedding ring. Um, it will never happen. And the stage after that will likely be the exodus, the max exodus of the native masculine men to more feminine traditional countries. So while we're in this state of um, severe uh, craziness in the dating world, um, a lot of the the women see things very uh, distorted because uh, they're only dating about 1% of men and they're all sharing the same men. Um, and all of these men are cheating because they have so many options. Um, they then project that onto the 99% of everyday men um, and describe that attribute of men cheating uh, to be universal uh, across all men. Uh, and it does even reach the stage where if a chad doesn't cheat and a chad remains loyal, she'll then actually be um, inclined to degrade him in her mind and put him back into the 99% of usually invisible men category because often it is the behaviours that these chads do that reinforce the behaviours in the women and their mindsets. 
So a lot of these women will also play mind games with the chads to try and make it seem like they're more valuable than the chads to try and get the chad to chase her um, and to let down his boundaries. And um, basically it, the, the game that be, is being played is that when chad lets down his boundaries for a woman, um, that's when she'll basically devalue him and monkey branch into the next one. Uh, you can get guys in this 99% of usually invisible men that do research things like game and try and psychologically manipulate women into thinking that they're more valuable than they are. And a lot of the times it works. So basically if a woman is to come across a 99% usually invisible man, uh, and that man might ignore her for a week or two and then text her at 2 o'clock in the morning, um, she's going to kind of be used to that kind of behavior from Chad and Tyrone and Chang and then ascribe those tra Chad attributes to that uh, usually invisible man. And yeah, like many guys, I don't like these games. I think they're really overplayed. Um, I see through them. I think they're boring. Um, and that's the other thing is that girls find this uh, exciting a lot of the time. So they associate loyalty and um, honesty with being a, a nice guy, being a boring guy. Um, but I think that like if you need a level of drama and constant change in your life to that degree that you're probably the boring person um, and someone who has like a, a, a passion or hobbies and interests and knowledge, um, they, they generally aren't the people that require a lot of drama uh, in order to entertain themselves. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. It was kind of off the cuff. I didn't script it. So sorry if it was a bit casual. Um, but I know you ladies like it casual all the time. No, I'm just kidding. All right. So um, I'll leave it at that and uh, check back in. I might make another video soon. Cheers.